Hello, this is Minder Chen. I'm a professor of management information systems at Martin B. Smith School of Business Economics, California State University, Channel Island. Today, we're going to talk about Lean Startup, and this is part of the entrepreneurship video series. And let's first kind of define、um, what is Lean Startup, and the the, the purpose of Lean Startup is. Allow you to start your business lean and quick. Lean just means without a lot of resources.、Um, so it introduced an innovative methods to build a new business in in the context of the lean startup approach.、Um, the application and the cases of how we can deploy、uh, the build, the measure, and learn cycle. Uh, to measure real users' feedbacks and to validate assumptions in a startup's、uh, business model、uh, will be presented. And the lean startup method teach us how to drive a startup, which include how to steer、uh, in the right direction when you may have to. Turn、uh, in case you're not going anywhere with the current direction, and when to persevere. You may encounter some obstacle, and doesn't mean you always make a turn to avoid it. And sometimes you need to overcome the obstacle、uh, in order to succeed. That's where you need the perseverance,、um, perseverance spirit. And it also discuss how you can grow、um, your business with maximum acceleration, and you can study the lean startup principles at this link. And lean startup,、um, in broadly defined,、um, it, it's described in Steve Blank's book called the Startup Owner's Menu. More narrowly defined, it include、um, it, it is discussed in Eric Rice's book called The Lean Startup.、Um, Eric has a strong software engineering background, so the concept of lean startup in his book is really based on something called agile、um, methods、uh, in terms of software engineering. But he kind of broadened it up and try to cover use. The spirit of methodology in the context of of、um, startup business, and 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 broadly defined, like Steve Blank did, is to also include the business model,、um, customer development model, and also the business model generation, particularly the business model canvas, and. We've seen this definition many times. A startup is a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model under extreme uncertainty. We also discussed previously what is innovation, but it doesn't hurt to really understand what innovation means in in the in a broader、um, sense. Innovation is application of a creative idea, knowledge, or technology、uh, to a product or service. It could be a process or business model that is accepted by markets and society. So, innovation really encapsulates、um, imagination, creativity. Implementation. Sometimes we refer this as execution, and plus value. Value is tied to this accepted by market and society by your customer. Every right、um, lists several principles for lean startup.、Um, they are、um, pretty basic. First, entrepreneurships are everywhere. Uh, even for well-established firms, you you can actually、um, encourage the entrepreneurship spirit、um, in terms of、uh, taking some innovative initiative. 
entrepreneurship is really a, a, in a broader perspective uh, management as well but it's it's different from managing a traditional firm it's more about managing a startup company and third is the principle of validator learning um, particular about the customers or about the uh, the product under development and you need to kind of test your product with customers and to validate some of the assumption that you have. And one of the most important principle is this build, measure, and learn feedback loop, which we'll discuss in detail. Uh, you build something, you measure its usage and feedbacks from the users, and you learn from um, the data that you have collected to gain insight. And then eventually you come back and, and review the product with some revision based on the insight. The last is called innovation accounting. Uh, innovation accounting, basically, it, it, it's not that you become very innovative in, in applying accounting principle. It really means that as a startup firms, the kind of performance measure that you try to um, conduct uh, can be quite different than the traditional firms. And it's mostly um, about the customer's behavior. And uh, you try to collect those uh, information in something called actionable metrics. There's quite a few resources um, related to Lean Startup. Um, this one we've seen it before. It's called Why the Lean Startup Change Everything. Every Rice book is always a good um, reference, and he also has a website list some additional information. And that if you follow this link, you will find a kind of visual summary, a pretty detailed visual summary of Lean Sada, which is pretty readable. And Kaufman Foundation has a series of video on the Lean approach. Um, Ari Rai gave a, about one hour talk at Google uh, that you're welcome to listen in. And Steve Jobs certainly has a, uh, has a series of video at uh, Udacity's um, uh, talking about how to build a startup uh, using the Lean Launch Pad, as he um, described. And you can find that video either to Udacity's website or go to um, a video list on YouTube. So there are three key components. You need to remember this uh, in Lean Startup Methods. Uh, the first is the business model canvas, um, which allow you to frame um, some of the hypothesis that you have about the nine components uh, that constitute the business model canvas. Second is the customer development model, uh, which allowed us to test on uh, those hypotheses in front of the customer, directly with the customer. The third is um, LGI engineering or LGI method in software engineering, which encourage us to build minimal viable product uh, to maximize our learnings um, regarding the product and the customer to see whether there's a fit. This is slide we use uh, when we talk about customer development model, um, which is a shift away from the product-centric development life cycle to a customer-centric, customer-first development cycle, which include customer discovery, customer validation, customer creation, and finally customer building. And it is um, believed by many experts in the field that uh, many startups fail from a lack of customer than from a failure of product development. And we have to try many times if we follow the customer uh, development model listed here, uh, the four stage model. We have to try many times before we get it right. Um, get it right in terms of um, having the right product for the right customer to solve the right problem the customer may have. 
and you need to have an attitude that it is okay to fail. So plan to learn from the failure. That's the insight, and you only move to the next stage、uh, when you learn enough to reach、um, the escape、uh, velocity.、Uh, this is you go through each of the stage. There's iteration here, and once you、uh, find something called problem solution fit, then you can move to the next stage. And once you find the so-called product market fit. By iterated through the customer validation stage, then you can go to the next stage. And sometimes, if you find that、um, some of your assumptions、um, may not be correct, then you may loop back、um, among the stages.、Um, and particularly, this to the customer discovery and customer validation, and then you will pivot your business model or some of the assumption in your business model. And at the Harvard Business Review article, they kind of、uh, briefly summarize and describe these four stages. So let's just quickly kind of、uh, read it for you. The founder translate company's idea into a business model hypothesis, and then we test the assumption about the customer's needs. Then we'll create a minimum viable product. Unless you will try to create a minimum viable product called MVP. To try out the proposed solution on your customer, and the startup will continue to test all the hypotheses and try to validate customers' interest through early orders or product usage.、Uh, if there's no interest, then the startup can pivot, which is loop back、um, by changing one or more hypotheses in the business model. And when you move to stage three,、uh, your product is refined enough to sell. So, using its proven hypothesis in the business model, the startup build demand by rapidly ramping up the mar- marketing and the sales、uh, spending and scale up the business. And eventually, at the stage four,、uh, the business would、um, would trend. Transform from the startup mode to um、uh, to a kind of a well-established companies、um, organizational forms,、um, and in the company building phase, we're t- kind of transforming from customer development team searching for answer to functional department, which is very traditional organizational structure. And and move、uh, to the execution on、uh, this the later two stage customer creation and company building is basically executing the business model and the first two stages、uh, is all about searching for the right business model. We mentioned、um, the build, measure, and learn、um, loop. Uh, which is at the core of the lean startup. It is called lean startup cycle. And in this diagram, first、um, explain the notations.、Um, in, in the kind of red、uh, circle is、um, a process. The kind of a blue t-、um, circle is the outcome、uh, out of the process. And the outcome of the process, such as product here, can serve as an input、uh, to another process. So if we start with the build, you got some idea, then you you will be building a prototype, a products,、um, and and then you're going to create a product out of this build process. The product will be used to experiment. Uh, to ask the user to try that out, and then then you would measure its reactions,、uh, collect certain measurement、um, in actionable metrics, and as a result, you're going to get lots of data、uh, regarding、uh, the user's user's pattern and feedback, and then the learn learning process is really try to analyze the data to gain insight. The insight allow you to kind of improve on your original ideas, 
and sometimes certainly to improve certain feature in your product. Um, therefore, you would revise, review your product based on the revised idea. So you basically are going through this circle um, many times. The concept of a Lean Startup is that you try to go through this learning cycle as fast um, as possible with uh, minimal resources uh, if possible. So the BU measure learn cycle and the MVP. Okay, uh, we just discussed the BU measure learn feedback loop. And in order to go through the loop, uh, the first step is figure out uh, whether the problem that needs to be solved, whether you have the so-called problem solution fit. And then we will um, engage in developing a minimum viable product, kind of a prototype, uh, to begin the process of learning or testing um, the product um, and the business assumption that we may have. And we try to do it as soon as possible. And once you have the MVP, um, we can work on kind of fine-tuning uh, the, um, the products and it will involve um, measurements and the learning, uh, which would uh, include conducting experiment and using the actionable metrics, um, which we use to collect uh, the performance data. Um, and it will help us to demonstrate the uh, cause and effect uh, regarding why certain thing is working or not working. And once you have the data, we can use uh, investigated development method called um, five whys. Uh, we mentioned this in design thinking, keep asking why. Why we have, uh, we're seeing certain pattern when we compare the users behavior was maybe two alternative design. And that will allow us to gain insights. Uh, earlier in our video series, um, you've been asked to study Rent the Runway. And um, you, you probably want to go back and read that case uh, again. And this time, uh, instead of focusing on its business model, uh, try to focus on how uh, the two founders um, has um, what they have done in terms of testing assumptions in their business model in the early stage of uh, its startup process. Which is well documented uh, in this um, introduction chapter of this book called the Innovation Method, uh, which is highly recommended. Um, if you have studied the case, you'll find out that the two founders um, did not actually uh, write. Uh, any business plan, uh, however, they managed to actually obtain um, lots of startup uh, financing funding. Um, um, the, the reason they've been able to do it because they have conducted a series of experiments um, which to address some of the issue they may have or assumptions that um, they were making and the question that the investor may be asking, um, they kind of have done different kinds of experiment which m may give them the answer to address um, some of the key questions that the investor uh, may be asking them. And then because of that, uh, they uh, they have the real field data and it, it becomes a very convin convincing argument to convince the investor to invest in them. So you can watch this particular video, which um, Jennifer uh, Heimer, one of the co-founders, um, talk about how they would um, they tested their business ideas, and you can use the business model canvas to list some of the assumption, and then you can identify some of the. 
um, experiments they had conducted, uh, which tried to validate or um, verify um, some of the assumption. Another interesting concept, which is really associated with Lean Startup, um, particularly in the Lean approach, which try to understand uh, the customer better uh, before you fully devoted all your resources in the final product development is to follow uh, Paul Graham's uh, advice, uh, which is documented in one of his asset article called Do Things That Don't Scale. Uh, the title seems to be um, a little bit misleading or, or um, may not be very convincing by itself. Like why I want to do things that uh, don't scale. What Paul Grant really want to say is that at the beginning of when you just start your business, you uh, as a founders, you may want to do things that uh, don't scale in order to uh, get a deep understanding of your customers so you really understand their requirement and be passionate about their pain. Uh, you can watch one of the lecture here from the startup class, uh, which kind of described this approach. Let me give you a quick example. Um, there's uh, apps called Food on the Table. And now it's part of the uh, food.com's offering called meal planning. And it, the app or the website allow you to kind of specify your preference, the type of food that you like and the dish that you enjoy, it, and also the grocery store that you shop at. Then it will recommend dishes uh, um, for the week. Uh, so you don't have to kind of figure out uh, what to make for dinner. And the app also um, help you to save money to, uh, by listing items that are on sales. And um, at, at um, the chosen grocery store that you have specified earlier, it will also suggest recipe uh, based on some of those sales items. And this is kind of the mobile apps interface um, of um, the food on the tables. Um, and you can find out that um, they list stuff that's on sale from like Whole Food. And you can specify the kind of recipes and that you would like to kind of um, explore etc. And when they first get started, um, the founders um, basically just went to local grocery store and, and talked to people about their shopping experience at the same time offered to provide a service like what we just discussed. Um, and certainly they were turned down by many people, but eventually um, they found someone willing to um, kind of use the service. And however, at that time, they, they did not really have an app or a website. Um, they just had an idea and they kind of identify a problem. They had a kind of idea of a solution. So what they did is they just basically say, we will uh, come to your home and then we will provide the service personally. Um, that's why we call it a concierge uh, minimum viable product earlier. And they would just kind of go and talk to this guy, um, we have a personal service and ask what they like, where they shops and suggest recipe and eventually come up with a shopping list for grocery. And then they went and shopped for this guy and then uh, delivered the grocery personally. And, and but they do charge this guy like twenty dollars for a week, uh, a week for the service, and 
this definitely um, is not scalable and however um, this allow them to have a deep understanding what's involved and once they recruited um, several users uh, paying users uh, then they, they couldn't really handle it uh, manually anymore and that and but at that time they understand the requirement the process involved the, the complexities uh, they have a clear idea what kind of app or website they need to develop and that's when they kind of move the service online and after they view the app and website so this is one of the most important advice um, that why combinators uh, which program is heavily involved will give to any of the startup company which uh, they help um, to get started is to actually do things that don't scale and in essence what's involved in terms of do things that don't scale um, you recruit the user manually okay and remember the startup are fragile and you try to make your user very happy um, you try to provide a really incentively great service, a very personal service. And you try to pick a very narrow market because you're small, you need to be focused, you need to be focused um, in order to compete. You try to do things yourself. Um, and like Airbnb, uh, when they were uh, adopted by uh, Y Combinator, uh, Paul Grant suggests them to just go to New York City and talk to their custom host which is really part of their customers and then eventually they end up taking picture of their uh, host um, room because a lot of them um, didn't have the photography technique to take nice picture of their room the room is really better than the picture they posted so the the, the found one of the founder um, just visit them one by one and took picture for them and post on the website that actually made um, Airbnb took off just because they have now a more professional looking picture they're attractive um, kind of offering through those pictures you try to be become um, some of your users consultant um, a lot of things uh, may not work uh, so it's like uh, Flintstones under the hood under the hood you're doing a lot of things manually but you pretend you have a kind of complete website and you try to avoid the big launches until you get it right another key turn or concept is called minimum viable uh, products which is really a kind of a product development strategy um, which allow you to which kind of force you to develop a prototype very fast and hopefully that prototype will be um, useful for the user allow some of them to start adopting uh, the product or services and so you can start collecting um, some performance data and testing the products and or products features uh, it's an iterated process um, of idea generation prototyping testing the prototype gathering the performance data analyzing the data and learn from it so minimum viable product is a bare bone offering of your product or service that just has enough features sometimes I call this minimum requirement to allow useful feedback from early adopters it allows the team to collect customer feedback to validate concepts and assumptions that underline the business idea and hopefully you will you can recruit customer that will use the MVP and pay for it that's very important eventually this allow you to find the product market fit okay the idea that they have um, that you got the right product for the right market to solve the right problem and and 
the solutions uh, is the one that we scaled uh, that will scale into large and, and profitable business. So basically, we we'll conduct we will be conducting hypothesis testing in order to gain insight. Um, you have your business model hypothesis. You would design experiment, develop MVP, or revising your MVP if you already have one, and then you will test it in the field. You will gather data and facts um, by conducting experiment uh, in the field, and by analyzing the data, you will gain insight uh, based on the facts from the field and which allow you to kind of come up with new hypothesis and by modifying your business model and then you will go through this kind of cycle again and again. So if you use the business model canvas, um, you can list um, in each of the building blocks some of the assumptions and then you need to come up with a list of experiments to test um, some of the assumption uh, to either validate it or uh, approve it wrong so you would revise it accordingly. Here's just example of some of the potential hypothesis that uh, you may come up with uh, in a business model uh, represented by business model canvas. For instance, um, at a customer segment um, building block, you, the hypothesis you may want to test are whether it's the right problem for the right customer or user and whether they're willing to pay for it. Pivot is another concept that we discuss, um, but not uh, discuss in detail and let's study it a little bit. Pivot is a change to business model component. Uh, could be any components um, based on customer's feedback. Um, a pivot is not a value. Okay. Pivot is a structure course correction. You're correcting the course of action based on your business model. It's designed to test a new fundamental hypothesis about your product, your business strategy, and your engine of growth. And so pivots are driven by your vision. Many elements in your business model canvas can, um, can be changed uh, through this pivoting process. Um, you can Pivot your customer segment, um, pivot the customer's need, um, pivot the platforms, changing the business architectures, and, and how you're going to capture value and come up with a different engine of growth, uh, pivot the kind of channel, whether it's virtual channel, online channel, or physical channel, and also the technology to be deployed. So instead of Working in the traditional um, high high certainty environment, like uh, well established firms, you you gotta go, you got a strategy, then you just go for it uh, without changing the course of actions. However, under high uncertainty um, for startup. You start somewhere, but then you would keep conducting experiments through minimal viable product, etc., to revise your business model until you uh, reach your destination, which could change um, over time. How do you conduct um, experiments um, in terms of getting feedback from the users? Um, we use experiment to test if customers are interested um, or what, um, what are their preference and if they're willing to pay for um, 
our offering in terms of product or service, we will try to let the user perform some, what we call it, call to actions or when they interact with our product or service. And because this call to action allowed us to measure their behaviors, which would, um, so we can collect data and by analyzing the data, we can gain insight, which allowed us to revise our product designs or, or service offering or revise some of the hypotheses we have in our existing business model. So you you can conduct user experiments to test whether users are interested uh, in our product or service or um, whether the product service is relevant to, to something they're interested in. And we also find out how important it is, um, the, the kind of issue we try to address through our product and whether eventually they're willing to pay for it or that someone is willing to pay for it. You can potentially use Google AdWords um, by creating a quick website with um, a landing page describing your product and service. And then you can um, kind of search what would be the best um, AdWords that you can use to kind of describe your product and services. And then you will purchase air ads, um, certainly with a small amount of money, assuming you don't have a lot of money, um, through the Google AdWords program, which you will buy the right keyword, and eventually will attract someone you don't even know to come to visit your kind of pop-up website with landing page, um, product landing page. And then you kind of describe at the landing page your product and service, and you will ask the user to kind of register your product. You, you kind of have to say, well, the product is not ready yet, but if you register, we will um, offer you some discount when it's ready. And if they register, that means they show interest. So you can track how many people come to your website, how many people register for future announcement. Um, this is one way that we can test customer interest. If you have um, various features that you're thinking about whether I should have feature A or B, you can conduct something called split test or AB test, which means you will build kind of two web page describing uh, your product, which has one with feature A, the other has feature B. And then if you can attract similar amount of the user come to visit uh, the two different page, you will find out how people will react to the two different features. And whichever feature that attract more customers commitment and interest, that's probably something you want to put into your, your product. And so this is uh, a lot of time referred to as AB test. What to test um, when you conduct this type of testing? Um, you can test different feature offering, pricings, uh, the discount to be given to the users, and uh, the copy text really here means the kind of ads, um, slogan, whatever sales pitch you want to use, um, etc. Okay. The call to action, the kind of action that the user may take could be actual purchasing or renting something, uh, sign up for um, on, for your email list or the clicking on button to get detailed product information or willing to uh, participate in a survey or the completion of any other task uh, out there. Another key concept which we mentioned um, but uh, require further uh, discussion here is called product market fit. Um, Mark uh, Andrewson, who is kind of a creator of Netscape uh, in the mid 90s and now um, a kind of venture capitalist, um, kind of try to articulate the importance of product market fit. And product market fit 
PNF in short means being in a good market with a good product that can satisfy that market. And you can always feel when product market fit um, is happening or isn't happening. Um, the customer aren't are not quite getting the value of your products. Words of mouth is not spreading. Uh, usage isn't growing that fast, and the press review are kind of not so um, positive. And your sales cycle takes too long, and lots of deals from sales lead uh, never close. Um, Mark and Drewson believe that the life of any startup can be divided into two parts. One is before product market fit, and the second part is after product market fit. And this is basically the first two stages of the customer development model, which is searching for customers and validating the customer. And then after product market fit, you go to the customer creation stage and then the company building stage. So this is what we meant um, earlier uh, in the first two stages, but the first stage, you kind of try to address the problem solution fit. We have this so-called three fits that actually um, work really well with this customer development model uh, down here. Uh, this kind of match the customer discovery stage. Uh, at the end of it, you should have a product solution fit. And at the end of the customer validation stage, you should have found your product market fit. And then once you move to the customer creations, um, you at the end of it, you probably should identify uh, the right growth engines which allow you to grow your business model. And at that time, it really means you you have the right business model fit um, on top of this product market fit. So if we break down those four stages, um, customer discovery, let's try to um, identify the product solution fit, and you will propose the MVP and you would try to propose the kind of marketing marketing funnels on that the user may have gone through at the customer validation stage on uh, you you try to find the right product market fit you also look at your business model more detail and then try to plan the sales and marketing roadmap on that you will follow later uh, in the execution uh, phase, which involve customer creations and, and the company building. At the customer creation, uh, you try to scale uh, your business by creating customer uh, rapidly. Company building, you try to scale the organization and scale your operation, including production, sales, marketing, etc. Let's switch gear just a little bit to talk about the art of bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is a term uh, which is consistent with the lean startup philosophy, which means you can start a business with kind of shoestring budget, but you can use the boot. Uh, strapping um, approach to kind of uh, build up your um, startup idea into a, a very solid business model. Um, so a bootstrappable business model has the following characteristic. Uh, you don't really need a lot of capital. Uh, you have short uh, sales cycle in terms of uh, selling the product and collecting the payment. Um, and then you also have short payment terms. 
Uh, usually for consumer, you get paid uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it's business to business. Sometimes the payment term can be uh, 30 days or even 60 days. And hopefully you will have reoccurring revenue that you're uh, generating. And also you try to market your product and service through social media and put and also words of mouth. Um, you can go to Guy Kawasaki's website uh, where he talk about the art of uh, bootstrapping. Um, the art of bootstrapping also emphasized the following uh, kind of approach. One is focus on cash uh, flow uh, because if you run out of cash, uh, you, you, you're bankrupt um, you so manage your cash flow um, profitability may not be the highest priority um, because a lot of uh, startup company initially uh, may be losing money but uh, since you have some investments money uh, you want to manage that money very carefully you try to focus from the bottom up uh, this is talking about market sizing, which we'll discuss later. Uh, ship minimum viable product, prototype, whatever, and then test it. Um, and just have a dynamic team. Um, whether they have lots of experience or not is, is a different issue. Um, you want to start um, as a service business. Remember that um, the um, try to do things that doesn't scale. Uh, the founder actually will provide a personal service by interacting with the user and provide services uh, manually. Focus on function, not forms, because the function, we're not saying that the user interface or the form is not important, but uh, you, you definitely need to have the function to attract people to use your systems. And then you think about the form to make it easier to use and make it attractive uh, from the user interface or um, product design's viewpoint. Pick your battle. Try to be focused. You cannot um, fight on multiple um, battlegrounds. Um, understaff, which means that uh, try not to expand your force um, too quickly until you you find the right product market fit. Uh, you may want to outsource some of your activity uh, to limit the size of your um, your workforce. Um, go directly to the customers and position against the leader, which inspire you and also actually sometimes give you the reputation uh, that's kind of David against um, uh, a giant. Okay. And this take the red pill basically just means that you want to um, be very careful how you spend your money so you don't run up your money uh, too quickly. So you need to um, watch the cash um, that you're spending each month. Um, that's sometimes we call it a cash burn rate. And eventually then we, we will know how long we can last, as assuming we're spending the same amount of the cash per month. Uh, Seth Gordon also has actually a kind of a document on bootstrap, on bootstrapping. Uh, you can uh, study this. It's kind of an interesting concept. Uh, let me kind of introduce another interesting canvas. Uh, this is called Lean Canvas. It's like the business model canvas uh, with some twist, some modification. And this is particularly useful, but I believe in the early stage of your startup process. Um, I highlighted some building block, um, which are how this Lean Canvas uh, it's different than the traditional business model canvas that we introduced and used previously. Um, one is unfair advantage, which means what's your advantage uh, that make, make it 
difficult, if not impossible, for your competitor to copy. And another is you try to identify some of the top problems you try to solve, and then the top feature of the solution that you may want to develop to address this problem. Okay, this forces you to think about problem solution fit, and also forces you to think about um, the most important problem or solution features. Instead of key activity here, we talk about key metrics uh, that you will use to measure um, the key activities. In terms of revenue stream, we um, we need to figure out the revenue model, um, the lifetime value of our customers, and and the revenue stream in general. Um, who is paying and how much money can be generated by those paying customer and what's your uh, gross margin etc costs for startup customer acqui acquisition costs can be very high so you definitely don't want to miss that and other like distribution costs for the demand costs personnel costs are pretty common but remember to include the customer acquisition cost in your cost structures. The unique value propositions, um, it's a single, clear, compelling message that states why you're different and worth paying attention by your customer segments or by the investors. Um, so you want to kind of practice your uh, pitchable sentence. And here um, I have revised that um, view, measure, and learn uh, diagram um, and come up with this lean startup cycle. And here, first, um, you have an idea or a business model. Further down the road, you will have a business model. Um, you also try to um, you come up with your ideas uh, a lot of time based on the technology that you're, you believe will be the driving force for some exciting things coming our way or by observing some social trend and or it came from the personal suffering or pains or that you have or your friends and family may have that inspire you to actually come up with the idea or a business model then in order to kind of validate the business model ideas then you want to build uh, a prototype or minimal viable products. This is sometimes called think with your hand. Once you have the prototype or minimal viable products, um, that's the kind of a product and service that you're going to offer uh, to the target customers. And you want to make sure your product and service are addressing the jobs um, to be done by the target customer. And, and also the product and service um, are, um, has a fit in terms of the problem solution fit or uh, product market fit. Once you have the product and service, you will try to find and get real customer and have them use the systems by conducting split testing or observe then using your product and service or if it's a web application you can collect the so-called click string um, a record of their uh, navigation patterns and actions when they interact with your website and then you can analyze those data uh, to find out um, um, whether they have enough interest etc We'll talk about um, the net promotion score or the so-called AARR, sometimes they call it R, 
uh, the kind of a metrics that we will use to uh, measure some of the marketing inferno that we will discuss uh, later in another t uh, unit. And once we have the data, then we can learn from it to gain insight. It will allow us to validate our hypothesis or to revise and change our hypothesis. And the why phi, uh, phi Wise is the one of the technique which you can use to gain the insight uh, based on the data that we have collected. Lean startup and the traditional startup um, are different. Uh, this is based on the Harvard Business Review article. Um, lean startup, we focus on business model, not business plan. Um, all our actions are hypothesis driven instead of implementation driven and implementation driven is really it's uh, based on the business plan and here hypothesis driven is based on the business model and the new product process is really based on customer development model customer first instead of the pro uh, product development or product management model and the engineering approach is following the agile development methods and traditionally we may use something called waterfall um, development model and the organization for lean startup is customers on um, developing or agile developing and we hire people who are willing to learn who are resourceful and we try to move as fast as we can traditional organization um the departments are functional uh, oriented and we hire people with experience and ability to execute because this is more about execution this is more about searching Financial reporting, this is traditional financial statements such as income statement, balance sheet, ca cash flow statements. And for Lean Startup, the metrics um, are actionable metrics that try to measure customer acquisition cost, lifetime customer value, churn rate, and environment, etc. Um, for Lean Startup, value is expected. Um, we We'll fix um, our business model by iterating on ideas and pivoting away from one that doesn't work based on um, our test. Okay, and for traditional organizations, um, they deal with value and just say that's an exception, or they just fired um, executive, uh, uh, let them take the blame. Um, Lean startup emphasize. Uh, fast speed you try to so a lot of time when you conduct experiment um, the data may not be um, comprehensive but uh, good enough is enough uh, just because of the in the interest of speed last but not the least um, let's put together um, the some of the concept we have discussed uh, in this framework basically you have a business model canvas um, could be version one or version two you try to list a hypothesis in your business model then you would design prototype MVP and in order to test those hypotheses once you have the product developed you will conduct tests um, on some of the hypotheses you would collect data measure the result and by building actionable metrics and analyze those metrics to obtain insight once you have the insight then you can revise, redesign, or pivot your current business model. Now you would develop the next version business model canvas based on the, the insight that you have gained and you will revise your business model canvas. And once this has been 
completed, then you will actually go through this again uh, to further validate some of the new hypothesis, etc. So in this diagram, you're seeing business model canvas. This is basically that um, build and measure and learn cycle. So with this, um, we're done with this Lean Startup Lectures. Thanks for your attentions. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.